All right, it's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, and in this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming summer season, meteorological summer, the months of June, July, and August. Before we get to that seasonal forecast, though, quick review of today, and we'll talk about the upcoming uh, forecast for the next few days. And well, it took forever today for the clouds and the fog to clear, kind of unusual for the middle of May. This was a scene that's a little more typical of earlier in the spring or late in the summer into the fall season with the uh, clouds and the fog lasting well into the morning. But then finally, the atmosphere got mixed up enough that we just turned awfully nice during the afternoon today with just a few passing fair weather clouds, and it's a beautiful Thursday evening. So temperature-wise today, we did all right with that afternoon sun at the airport. We got up above the average, 76 this afternoon. Our average is 71. The uh, record low today, 30 in 1956, and 1956 on today's date, also the date of the last measurable snowfall of the uh, season on record, or the latest, I should say. For our region, we had uh, measurable pre measurable snow, I should say, on May 16th, 1956. More recently, back in 2016, we had measurable snow on May 15th, the day before today. But May the 16th is the latest such occurrence in our area. All right, we don't have snow, of course, coming our way, but we do have some rain to talk about for the next couple of days. This is actually kind of a warm front that's tracking eastward. The uh, cold front with the systems way out here. We also have low pressure forming down near the Gulf Coast, bringing more wet weather and severe weather chances to Texas and Louisiana. It's been a wet go of it in that part of the country of late. Well, uh, for us, the first thing we'll see is our warm front approaching late tonight into tomorrow, and here's what we've done with the hourly rain chances for Friday. Don't forget to check these out anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Uh, rain chances elevated in the morning. Probably a wave of showers in the morning, maybe a thunderstorm, but mostly just showers. And then everything becomes more scattered in nature for a lot of the midday and even the first part of the afternoon. I think the most numerous afternoon showers are likely to come uh, mid to late afternoon, four or five, maybe six o'clock at the latest. But even that's going to be pretty scattered, hit or miss, kind of luck of the draw kind of stuff. It's going to be another one of those days, kind of like we had yesterday, where it's just kind of impossible for me to say, it's going to start raining in your backyard at this time. You know, that's, that's something we get asked a lot. Hey, when's it going to rain today? What time does the rain start? And it's just going to be one of those days where you can't really answer that question with any degree of certainty uh, with the scattered nature of things in the afternoon. So our warm front lifts through in the morning, scattered showers for the afternoon. We probably get a break for a lot of Friday night. Now, Saturday's forecast remains kind of a tricky one. We still have this low pressure system, the same one that's impacting Texas and Louisiana now. That's going to track to our to the north and to the east. But it looks like it's going to jog just far enough to the south that our rain chances on Saturday look to be fairly minimal. I could see where there's a shower here and there in the morning, and I could also see as we get into the afternoon on Saturday, with a little self-destruct sunshine perhaps working in, I could see where there's just a couple of renegade straggler showers, maybe a thunder shower, somewhere in Northeast Ohio and Northwest PA. It's a low chance thing though. But it's Saturday in May, a lot of people have outdoor plans at this time of the year on the weekends, and so the forecast is important. And can I guarantee at every location it's going to be dry from start to finish Saturday? I cannot, but I don't think anywhere we're going to see any sort of washout on Saturday. In fact, those rain chances in any one spot are going to stay pretty low throughout the day. Either way, got a nice day coming up on Sunday with a partly sunny sky. So the weekend forecast temperature-wise, 75 on Saturday and 79 on Sunday. This warming trend that starts on Sunday will continue into early next week with highs in the 80s in our forecast for Monday and Tuesday. All right, let's talk about that summer forecast. You know, we don't make a, as big of a deal out of these summer outlooks or any other seasonal outlook as we do with the winter outlook, which if you've watched my videos and read my blog posts about the winter before, uh, those, those videos can be 15 or 20 minutes. We're not going to have that kind of video here this evening, but we are going to talk about some of the same forecasting methods as we use in the winter season to make these seasonal outlooks. And one of the signposts uh, for a hot summer, the number of 90 degree days we see in our area. We average about eight per year. Last year we only had two and they were both pretty early in the season. It really was not a very remarkably warm summer at all in 2023. In fact, it was our coolest summer in about eight years. Temperatures uh, for June, July, and August last year about a half a degree, 0.4 below the average. Uh, so it's been since 2015 since we've been in that territory. We had three straight rather cool-ish summers back in the middle of last decade, but ever since then, with the exception of a pretty normal summer in 2017, we've had plenty of hot and muggy summers of late. Precipitation-wise, we had a dry summer two years ago back in 2022. Now, we were a little drier than average last year, but only by you know a few hundredths of an inch. It was very close to average in terms of our total precipitation at the Youngstown Warren Airport last summer. You know how it goes with summer precipitation. 
the scattered nature of thunderstorms. Some places surely had more than 11.81 inches of rain last summer. Some places probably had even in a couple of inches less than that. It just kind of depends. But the official number at the airport was very close to the average last summer. But as you can see, since 20, about 2012, we've been consistently above the average in terms of our summer precipitation. Only a few dry summers on this list of late 2022 being the most significant one. Look how much rain we had in the summer of 2021, 20.47 inches. So some trends for our most recent summers. What are we watching out for this summer? Just like with the winter forecast, we keep a close eye on what's going on in the oceans because the oceans and the atmosphere play together. They make, they make uh, each other do different things. Cooler water in one place and warmer water in another makes the jet stream do certain things and that can have implications, of course, on our sensible weather. The most important things for our summer forecast, here's La Nina emerging right here. We just came out of El Nino, which we had last winter. Now the waters in the equatorial Pacific are cooling. We're heading back into La Nina, which we've been in more frequently than El Nino in recent years. Also important for us, this warm stripe right here and this cool kind of horseshoe from the Gulf of Alaska down through uh, the Baja of California and south and east of Hawaii. The configuration of those water temperature anomalies important for our how our summer will go. One of the big questions I have is will this warm tongue push east and bank up against North America? If it does so, that could mean not as hot of a summer for us. But if everything kind of stays the same, if that cooler water remains anchored off the coast of, of North America, you probably get a trough of low pressure out here and downstream of that you get a ridge and that means hotter risks for our part of the country. So all this is important along with La Nina and for tropical interests, of course, all the warm water right in through here in the Atlantic Ocean. That is important for the upcoming hurricane season. All right, so what do we think is gonna happen this summer? Let's put some percentages on it. Uh, we think odds strongly favor it being a hotter than average summer. You can see it's about 65% the chance of a warmer than average summer and only about a 5% chance that it's below the average by a significant margin. 30% chance that it's within a degree on either side of average. Precipitation is tricky, and I think this season could be kind of split in half. I think the first half of summer could be pretty stormy and with frequent bouts of precipitation. We may dry up pretty quickly by July and especially into August. Uh, under that premise, we may come out in the wash as a little bit drier than the average. We're very close to the average, but it may be one of those things where it's a distinctly different pattern early in the season than later in the season. I don't think odds strongly favor it being significantly wetter than average all three months. Um, I think uh, we do have some drier risks in our forecast for later in the summer season. Now, that being said, even though we may dry out mid to late summer, I think the prevailing pattern across North America may favor pretty frequent severe weather episodes, especially from the Corn Belt down through kind of the mid-Ohio Valley, lower Ohio Valley. We'll be kind of, kind of on the fringes, perhaps, of this track. And, you know, this is kind of the pattern we've been in in the spring. Uh, the summer pattern is probably already showing its hand. Uh, so far this spring. It's been a very active spring for tornadoes from Iowa to Ohio with a lot of activity of course in western Ohio and I could see where this continues into the summer where you get a ridge of high pressure off to the south. Uh, let me zoom out my map here. You know I, I kind of foresee the prevailing pattern being you know some sort of ridge taking hold down here and then we get these kind of ridge riding thunderstorms up like this. They form out here, they come cascading down through the Corn Belt into the Ohio Valley Will we be talking about the, the big D word this summer, derecho? Wouldn't surprise me if we had a couple of those traversing through parts of the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. Uh, even if we don't have technically a derecho kind of a summer, it may be a summer with frequent what we call MCSs, mesoscale convective systems, those long-lived bands of thunderstorms, kind of like a derecho, but maybe not as long-lived as a derecho. It could be that kind of summer, though, is the bottom line. If you get a ridge down here, a lot of times you're going to get moisture coming up and over that ridge and a northwest flow in the summer aloft is a prime you know signal for uh, bouts of severe weather all right so the bottom line for the summer forecast i think it'll be hotter than last summer maybe by a fair margin should be our warmest since at least 2020 2021 and maybe even our warmest summer since several years before that uh, starting stormy but ending dry i think maybe the tenor of the summer precipitation wise and again in terms of severe weather, we could have a long dry streak interrupted briefly by one Mondo band of thunderstorms that was birthed in South Dakota and came rumbling across. I could see where that's kind of something we deal with this summer as well. 
And again, in the oceans, this is going to be important for anyone with uh, friends or family in hurricane-prone areas. Florida, the Gulf Coast, Carolinas, parts of the East Coast. All this warm water through here, it is really warm. It's more like August already in terms of our water temperatures in this kind of prime development region for hurricanes in the Atlantic. This, combined with La Nina, which typically reduces wind shear in the atmosphere, will be a very favorable environment, I think, for a whole bunch of storms. Lots of tropical storms and hurricanes. Now, every one of them come to the U.S.? No, I don't think so. But, you know, if the premise is you don't have a dominant ridge here, but it's maybe in the northern Atlantic and also across, you know, northern latitudes of North America, that could open up the door to landfalling systems more so into the U.S. Um, so either way, the number of landfalls in the U.S., that's, that's throwing darts at a dartboard. But I do think it will almost certainly be a more active than usual hurricane season in the Atlantic. As far as the implications for us around here, of course, we don't see direct impacts from landfalling tropical systems in Ohio and Pennsylvania. We're a long way from the coast. But it's not uncommon, of course, for the remnants of tropical systems to bring us bouts of heavy rain. And I could see where once or twice or maybe three times or so uh, we deal with that sometime between the summer in the fall season. All right, so that's it for me on this special edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you back here on Friday for an update on the weekend forecast and much, much more. See you then.